Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be talking about a multi-day severe weather event that's going to be impacting the United States beginning today and rolling all the way through the end of the week and overall this will bring some isolated to scattered severe weather from the Great Plains back into parts of the Midwest and then eventually into the Ohio Valley with damaging winds hail and even maybe a few tornadoes being possible. In addition to this we do have Tropical Storm Ernesto that is a approaching Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles, and this will likely become a hurricane and perhaps even a major hurricane as we go later into the week and eventually into the weekend. So we are going to talk all about this in today's forecast, but I do want to begin with what's happening across the United States right now, and notice back over in Kansas and Nebraska, this is some of the infrared imagery from very late last night, and just notice a huge complex of storms rolling across Kansas overall this morning, and a lot of this is just dumping rainfall. We actually had some flash flooding last night across parts of central and western parts of Kansas. All of this is mostly moving to the east and it should die out as we go later into today, but we are going to be watching for another reinitiation of storms as we go later into today across parts of the High Plains and perhaps even back near Kansas City where more severe weather will be a possibility. And the main reason why we are seeing this is that we have a high pressure system down to the south that's kind of bringing some moisture back over into the Great Plains. And that's something that we're going to be watching for today and tomorrow. And then eventually by the time we go into Thursday, we're actually going to get a trough that will bring a bit more of an organized threat for severe weather, I think, as we go into Thursday and as well as into Friday. So definitely going to be something to watch for then. The East Coast is very quiet right now, and I don't expect it to really change much over the next few days. The next time that it'll probably be a little bit more active would probably be as we go into either the weekend or very early next week. Now let's talk more about that severe weather potential for the next few days, and we'll begin with today, which is tossing trampolines on Tacos Tuesday. Two areas to watch for. We got one in South Carolina for mostly just an isolated hail and wind threat, basically your garden variety type spring or summertime thunderstorms. Then back over in the central plains and through areas like Montana, we have another large marginal threat of severe weather. The main concern for today in this area will be wind and hail. I would not rule out a conditional tornado risk back over in parts of Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska. It is relatively rural areas though. Wind and hail, again, the main concern for today. We actually have three different areas that we're looking at for some large hail. Kind of an interesting looking figure here and then the tornado risk right now not outlined by the storm prediction center but i wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado in like eastern colorado later today and then once we go into wednesday the severe weather risk does uptick just a little bit back over in the central plains where we do have a slight risk in place for severe weather in northeast kansas northwest missouri southwest iowa and southeast nebraska and i am not ruling out us going live for this it is a small scale area it's really not a big threat by any means but there will be a chance for an isolated tornado tornado or two, especially out of those initial supercells. The marginal threat goes from North Dakota back even into the Texas Panhandle. So again, the main concern across the board will be damaging winds and hail, and that should go for most of these days, but there will be a chance for an isolated tornado or two back over in the four states that I just mentioned. Now, the tornado threat for today and tomorrow is expected to be relatively low. Now, for today, it is conditional, but we could see an isolated tornado back over in like eastern Colorado, but overall, I'm not really expecting much of an organized setup. I think overall today will be more of a linear line of storms, but I still wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado. We end up having a tornado or two back over in like northern Colorado very late yesterday uh, afternoon into the evening, and there was no tornado risk outlined by the Storm Prediction Center. I wouldn't be shocked if something like that happened again today, but it is again another very conditional risk of there being something discreet. Once we go to tomorrow, we're going to see a little bit more of an organized threat for a tornado risk back over in parts of southeast Nebraska and northeastern Kansas, which is where I I think personally there will be probably at least one spin up or maybe even brief tornado, but we could even see something leak into Iowa or Northwest Missouri. The main concern is going to be during the late afternoon into the early evening. So for today, storms will be rumbling across Colorado. Again, these will be mostly elevated, but anything that can be a bit more surface based and discreet could produce the potential for a tornado. Definitely going to see some pretty crazy structure, I think, out there. By the time we go into the evening hours, this will be mostly a Boeing segment for damaging winds that'll move into Nebraska and Kansas. It should be mostly just isolated to scatter damaging winds, and then that'll kind of fall apart as we go into Wednesday morning. Now, notice this as we go into Wednesday morning. The HRRR model does show an elongated area of showers and thunderstorms, and this could actually lead to flash flooding across parts of Missouri. I would not rule out some sort of significant flooding event back over in central or southern Missouri. So 
so definitely be mindful of that. It'll be happening overnight, so it's definitely not going to be a great time for that to happen. Once we go into Wednesday, storms are going to initiate in a couple different areas. We'll have a few storms probably in northern Nebraska. Those will be mostly just wind events, same thing with South Dakota, but this is the area right here that I'm watching for the closest, as we could see an isolated tornado, some large hail, and damaging winds. This will eventually just kind of become another line of thunderstorms, and it should be mostly a wind threat as that moves towards Kansas City, but I still wouldn't rule out a brief spin-up as that continues to track to the east. Now, one thing that I just mentioned is that the flooding threat could actually be relatively significant. The HRRR model currently showing that we could see some spots back over in Missouri with anywhere from 5 to 10 inches of rain. So this could actually be somewhat similar to what we saw in Oklahoma City only a couple of days ago. So be mindful of that if you are anywhere in the stretch of central and southern Missouri. Now, keep in mind, this may or may not happen, and it also could change positions a little bit. Like, this could go a bit further west or east in terms of where the heaviest rain does fall. So definitely going to be something to monitor here over the next 24 hours. Now, here's what we're looking at for the tornado threat beyond today and tomorrow. As we go into Thursday, we are eventually going to see a, I think, a bit more of an organized threat for severe weather in the Midwest, where we end up, we could end up seeing a couple of tornadoes on Thursday back over in parts of Illinois, and maybe even into central and southern Missouri. So something to watch for, and then eventually by Friday, we could see a low-end tornado risk back over in the Ohio Valley. And we're going to talk more details about timing and exactly where that threat could be the greatest in our next video, so make sure that you are subscribed down below. But I do think Thursday could be one of the bigger days this week. One of the reasons why is because this jet stream that we're currently looking at now, there is a ridge back over in the southern plains, and that's basically just leaving to a ton of moisture back over in the central plains. That's why we are seeing that severe weather risk be a bit more elevated, at least for today and tomorrow. But by the time we go into Thursday and Friday, we are going to get a low pressure system that'll be just slightly negatively tilted, and that could lead to a little bit more of an elevated threat for some severe weather in the Midwest for Thursday and even maybe into Friday as that moves towards the Ohio Valley. And then eventually as we go into Saturday and Sunday, that moves into the Northeast and just kind of dies out as mostly a rain threat. But one thing that we're going to be watching for next week is going to be an Omega Block pattern. A ridge will build and that'll eventually lead to a somewhat cooler weather pattern back over in the Midwest and the Northeast. But on the flip side of things, it's just going to be brutally hot basically for the Southern Plains, the Southeast and back through parts of the West Coast. And then eventually as we go into the middle of next week we could get some more activity back over in parts of the midwest but that does remain uncertain at this time here's the future radar for the next several days so again notice that low pressure system comes into play by late uh wednesday night into thursday that could lead to some severe weather in the midwest as we go into thursday and as well as into friday for the ohio valley by saturday into sunday we are going to be watching ernesto which is ex again expected to stay away from the united states but it is expected to be a relatively powerful category two or three hurricane and then once we go into the week weekend, the late weekend and into early next week, we'll continue to see a pretty active weather pattern in the Northeast with plenty of rainfall and then eventually Ernesto will probably avoid New England unless, you know, something changes really last minute. And then by next week, we could see another large trough move into the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, but at this point, it's very uncertain if that will even happen and if it'll bring any sort of impacts. The next few days for the temperatures, we're going to continue to see hot weather in the southern tier of the United States. This is Tuesday afternoon's high temperatures. By Wednesday, that heat will start to build again back over in parts of the Central Plains, and eventually as we go into Thursday, Friday, and as well as into Saturday, that temperature trend is just going to kind of stay as is. It's not going to really change a whole lot. The Southern Plains, Texas and Oklahoma especially, will be brutally hot, but the rest of the country not looking too shabby, at least for the Midwest and the Northeast, and then eventually by next week, things are probably going to stay basically the same, so no big changes in the forecast for the next little while. Now here's a quick update on Tropical Storm Ernesto. This is what it looks like right now. It is moving quickly towards the Lesser Antilles, and this is something that's shocking about this, but this is right now moving west at about 25 miles per hour. It is a very fast moving tropical storm right now going towards the Lesser Antilles. Over the next few days, it will be bringing impacts to areas like Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and as well as again the Lesser Antilles. It should stay a tropical storm until it gets past the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and then after that it'll take a turn to the north more than than likely as a hurricane. So this will be something that we're going to be talking about likely for the next week or so as it's not really going to be going anywhere anytime soon when it comes to just completely diminishing. As of now, it is expected to become a hurricane by Wednesday evening just to the north of the Dominican Republic. By the time we go into late Thursday into Friday, it'll be very close, if not borderline, to a Category 3 hurricane. And it is likely to make some pretty major impacts to Bermuda as we go into Friday night and as well as into Saturday. And then after Saturday, it's likely to start to move more to the north 
north and northeast, and it will likely impact Nova Scotia. I do not see many impacts for the United States, though, aside from higher wave heights and swells if you're near the coast. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.